Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel Trouble Free. In today's video, we are going to learn about the base optimal classifier. I've already explained about what base theorem is. First, watch that video if you have not yet watched, because on the basis of that theorem only we are going to define this and the naive base classifier and the Bayesian relief networks everything is depending on this on the um, base theorem concept actually so first watch that video and then come come to these all videos okay so first what is base optimal classifier actually base optimal classifier is a probabilistic model you need to understand this word probabilistic model okay that makes the most probable prediction for a new example so whenever you're getting a new example it will make the most probable prediction that is the most efficient prediction like that you can say so don't get confused I'll explain you with the example then you can understand it in a more better way okay so let's get into the example so you know this this is what base theorem means right b of a by b that is you need to find out the probability of a when the probability of b is already given so that is what p of a by b means okay is equal to p of b by a into p of a by p of b okay so done so this is the base theorem so based on this we are going to now apply now do an example for base optimal classify classification okay now for a data site for a data set you'll have x1 x2 x3 and so on right you'll have so many features you'll have so many you know yeah so many features or attributes you can say anything so x1 and so on up to xn you'll have and here y is there y means yes or no you're dividing it into yes or no whether you're dividing it into the positive category or into the negative category like that okay now you need to define the probability for this now when you are defining the base theorem for this how do you define that P of y by x1 and so on up to xn is equal to P of x1 by y x2 by y into so you'll be multiplying all of them okay and into finally P of y divided by in the denominator what you'll have the second whatever is there after the slash whatever is there that you'll have in the denominator right so that same you're going to write in the denominator okay now how can you represent this as multiplication means nothing but pi we already know that i already explained in one video sigma means summation you will add pi means multiplication so how sigma is for addition how sigma is used for representing addition like that you will be using pi for representing the multiplication okay so p of y into p of y is taken out and i is equal to 1 to how much n so xi by y so like this in generally you will be representing this okay and in the denominator you have the same thing okay done now see p of y is equal to only i have written the numerator i have not written the denominator see, Actually, denominator is nothing but x1 x2 and so on up to xn right so you are multiplying the probability of each and every feature present over there then how will it become a constant you can get out see one thing here what you're doing you're not finding out the value you are finding out the optimal solution which is optimal which is the better one you're finding out you're not finding out the value right so here what you have to do is the denominator can be omitted why because suppose in suppose you're having 100 uh, samples in that you have 7 x1 8 x2 like that you have you, so now what is the probability of x1 7 by 100 what is the probability of x2 it's 8 by 100 so probability of x3 could be some 20 by 100 whatever it is so each and every feature will have its probability right so the fee, the probability will not change even if it is yes or even if it is no whether we are accepting x1 or we are rejecting x1 x1 will be in our sample right x1 will be in our um, data right so the probability will be fixed the probability will not change so that is the reason why you can eliminate this suppose if you are finding out the value instead of finding which is the best or one if you're finding out the value then in that case this is required because this will change the calculation right but since we are finding out only the optimal one which is the best one so this is not required so we are not concerned about the calculation we are concerned about the output whether we will be getting which feature will be the optimal one right so you need you can happily eliminate this denominator and because of that reason you'll be getting only this okay so i hope whatever i've explained till now is clear for you now let's try to understand this in a more better way with the help of an example yeah let's see the example now i guess you all remember the concept of enjoy sport where we have 14 attributes and uh, sorry 14 uh, you know values and we have some attributes like outlook humidity temperature right uh, will the player enjoy the sport or not based on all these conditions so that we will have some attributes and we have some values for that right so from that table we have taken some we are going to discuss about the outlook and about the temperature now okay so we have taken only two attributes the one is outlook and the other one is temperature and based on these two attributes we are going to decide whether the player is going to enjoy the sport or not okay so that is the example we are going to use here and first see outlook let us uh, draw the table so if you can see the actual table from there in outlook if it is sunny the 
player will enjoy the game for two times and if it is sunny the player will not enjoy the game for three times and even in outcast also if the, if it is uh, you know i mean if outlook is showing outcast the player will enjoy for four times no for zero times and if it is raining the player will enjoy for three times and it, the player will not enjoy for two times like this you need to add up all these things 4 plus 2 you get 6 6 plus 3 is 9 total is 9 uh, total of yes is 9 and total of no is 5 right now you need to find out the probability so here it is 2 by 9 because sunny is 2 the value of sunny is 2 and the total value is 9 right so 9 right so 2 by 9 you get and here you get 4 by 9 and here you get 3 by 9 and here also same the total is 5 here right so 3 by 5 0 by 5 2 by 5 and 100 percent we have covered all the values right so in the same way you need to fill up for temperature also so when the temperature is hot the player will enjoy game for two times and when it is hot the player will not enjoy the game for two times and mild cold in the same way you need to fill up the table from that bigger table which has 14 rows if you can see 14 rows and it has six um, attributes and the last one also so based on that you're going to fill this table and the probability now it will be 2 plus 4 plus 3 it is 9 and again 2 plus 2 plus 1 it is 5 okay the same 9 and 5 again so the probability of hot will be 2 by 9 probability of mild will be 4 by 9 cold is 3 by okay and here the probability of no is 2 by 5 2 by 5 and 1 by 5 so you like in this way you got the probability for both outlook and temperature done and also we have one more thing for play also we have yes no so how many total of yes we have see here total we have 9 9 yes right so 9 how many total of no you have 5 so 9 plus 5 is 14 and probability of yes is 9 by 14 and the probability of no is 5 by 14 right done and now what you have to do is you need to find the probability of total of sunny comma hot so when it is sunny and when it is hot that is when the outcast shows sunny and the temperature shows hot whether the player will enjoy the sport or the player will not enjoy the sport you need to calculate okay so for this what you have to do is you need to first find out the probability of yes and you need to find out the probability of no and then you need to check okay so i'll tell you that first p of yes by sunny comma hot is nothing but for this what you need to do by applying the base theorem base theorem in the sense uh, this one this product rule what do you get you get p of sunny by s yes into p of hot by s yes into p of s right that is what you have to do and you can omit the denominator since the denominator always remains constant now p of sunny by s yes. so sunny by s yes in the sense how many uh, yeah don't get confused go to this table sunny yes so what is the probability of sunny and yes 2 by 9 so you need to take 2 by 9 okay and hot of yes so here is hot and here is yes so 2 by 9 again 2 by 9 and yes what is the probability of yes it is 9 by 14 right so you need to substitute all and you'll get the answer is 0 0.031 okay done now we are going to calculate it for no for no what it will be p of no by sunny comma hot which is nothing but p of sunny by no into p of hot by no into p of no what is p of no the probability of no what is the probability of no 5 by 14 remember that p of sunny know. by no again going into this table sunny no what is the probability 3 by 5 hot no 2 by 5 so 3 by 5 into 2 by 5 into 5 by 14 so when you do the calculation you get it as 0 0.08571 you'll be getting the answer when you do this multiplication okay now what is the total probability of both yes and no it is 0 0.031 plus 0 0.08571 which gives you 0 0.20 0 0.27 okay done now you need to calculate the p of s and p of no now individually how do you get that is so p of s is nothing but 0 0.031 divided by 2 0 0.27 because 0 0.031 is the probability of yes right yes and being sunny comma hot so that player will enjoy zero the probability of player will enjoy the sport when it is sunny and hot is 0 0.031 and the probability that player will enjoy the game when it is sorry with the player will not enjoy the game when it is sunny and hot is 0 0.0857 yes right? 0 0.031 the yes value by 0 0.27 the complete value and here 0 point so you need to calculate the probability for yes and no again now from these two probabilities you need to compare which is more either yes the probability of yes is more or the probability of no is more so obviously the probability of no is more because 0 0.3 is greater than 0 0.1 right so then you get the probability of no is more since the player will not enjoy the sport if the probability of yes is more then the player would have uh, enjoyed the sport when it is sunny and hot so when it is sunny and hot the player is not going to enjoy the sport because the value of no is more than the value of yes okay done so this is how you need to do the base optimal classifier so in base optimal classifier what you 
you are doing you are not finding the value of something you are just finding out the optimal one whether the player will enjoy or he will not enjoy like that okay so uh, this is all about this video and if you are still having any doubts apart from what I have explained in this video you can I am actually sorry I have to tell about Gibbs algorithm also in this um, video I am really very sorry let's see about the Gibbs algorithm now so in Gibbs algorithm same that you are going to use the same concept and all everything but the thing is you will be choosing one hypothesis at random according to p of h by d and you will this you will use this to classify the new instance so when you already have the base optimal classifier what is the use of Gibbs algorithm why should you go for Gibbs algorithm is Bayesian optimal classifier will give you best result of course but when you have so many hypotheses it cannot give you best result in when you are having so many hypotheses this Bayesian optimal classifier will become very expensive and in order to avoid that problem we are going with the Gibbs algorithm okay done so the same process you are going to do in the Gibbs algorithm as well in the Gibbs algorithm also you will be getting the error but that will be less than or equal to two times the error in Bayesian optimal so that is it can be equal also sometimes so error in the Gibbs algorithm may be equal to the to double the error in the Bayesian classification Bayesian optimal classifier which means sometimes you may get less than or equal to in the sense some kind, sometimes you can get lesser error or you can get even equal error also as that of double of Bayesian classifier okay so this uh, you need to remember and that's all for this video if you're still having any doubts apart from what I've explained now you can happily ask me about your doubts in the comment section I'll definitely try to reply for all your comments and if you want me to make any other topics or any other subjects just let me know that in the comment section I'll definitely try to make it for sure and thanks for watching the video till the end